welcome to the CSS Podcast. And we are officially in our season five era. Can you believe it? (laughs) This season, we'll be covering some newer to the platform features, including APIs that you can use now, and some that aren't quite cross-browser ready yet, but still have strong support or signals. So we thought it would be a good idea to kick off the season with a feature set that I think is a game changer, and those are dialogue and popover, the dialogue element and the popover attribute. Dialogue is available in all modern browsers as of March 2022, so that's two years now, and it's considered baseline newly available at the time of this recording, but will become widely available soon. And Popover is a bit more recent, being a part of the Interop 2024 effort and currently planned to land in Firefox 125 mid-April, so that means it will be stable very soon as well. Awesome. I feel like I've said the joke before, but like pop over here and have a dialogue with me. But I have a new one, which <laughs> is uh, I want to have a dialogue and eat a pop over. Mm. Nice. So this is like getting um, it's almost lunchtime. I'm feeling hungry and I want to have a dialogue while I eat a pop over. Anyway, Let's have a dialogue over a pop over, a dialogue over a pop over. You, you can do can that do. in the top layer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no one got to see us. We totally realized that joke together. <laughs> Well, anyway, these two APIs, they give developers the power to enter into the top layer, control user focus, and support a few neat default actions in the case of popover like light dismiss and declarative handlers. They may seem similar, but semantically serve different purposes. So we'll dive into those similarities and the differences today. And given that Dialog landed first and currently has wider browser support, let's start with that one. Uh, So as per the MDN definition, the Dialog element represents a modal or non-modal Dialog box or other interactive component, such as a dismissible alert, inspector, or subwindow. And this is interesting because you could either have it be a modal or a non-modal, so it's pretty flexible in terms of being a component. Um, And it is an element, so you would use the Dialog element uh, as your initiating this. So uh, interestingly also, modal and non-modal dialogues behave very differently from each other. Uh, Modal dialogues will inert the rest of the page and force the user to interact with the dialogue first before proceeding to any other actions. And this might be great for your intended UX as this action might be required to proceed or maybe for like legal reasons, you need the user to approve a cookie banner or I don't know, something. Um, But it will inert the rest of the page. So you might not want that if it's a cookie banner actually. So uh, currently, JavaScript is always used to invoke a modal dialog. This might change in the future, but in the current implementation, you need to use JavaScript in the show modal function to invoke it. So once it's open, dialogs will get the open attribute applied to them, which is another difference from popover, where they get this open attribute applied, and then you can use the open attribute to style the popovers. So you can do things like dialog and then embraces open, and then apply those styles. And the dialog can be closed in a couple of ways too that vary from each other. The first is in JavaScript using the close method. The second is if you submit a form within the dialog using method equals dialog on the form. So there's a couple of unique things for dialog there. And then the third method would be hitting the escape key for modal dialog. So that's if you invoke a dialog with dialog.showmodal, and then you want to close it, you can close it with a variety of ways, and that includes hitting the escape key. Yeah, that that button that you need when you're panicking, you're like, go away! You know, like, <laughs> I hope they coded escape, and you're like, oh, the web platform has made it so it's easy to escape this trapping uh, yes. dialog. I like those methods, it though. <laughs> it does. It kind of feels, and it inerts everything else. It's like, all else shall not be interactive, yeah. just me. Um, and that form method is cool. It kind of reminds me of like an early version of what we're going to get out with popover for like invoker targets and stuff uh, where we're trying to like create declarative ways for you to close and open things. Um, also, a fun thing with that close function is you can pass a string to it and basically say, why are you closing it? And that's kind of cool. Like I have a dialogue where there's like a close button and a cancel button. And so when the user pushes it and I call close on the dialogue, I specify which one was pressed. So maybe for your analytics, maybe because you want to take them somewhere else, canceling something is different than like bailing. Um, And so you can kind of pass an intent along with the close, which is kind of fun. 
Um, but unlike modal di dialogues, the non-modal dialogues don't create this blockade, you know, with the rest of the page. And you invoke these to show with just the show method. So before it was show modal, and this one is just show. So that's kind of how you're distinguishing between whether want, you want one to be modal or not. Um, they will both get the open dialogue on the attribute or open attribute on the dialogue, uh, you know, like dialogue space open, just like how you had it before. The only difference is it's non-modal. So in this case, since it's non-modal, hitting escape won't close it. And a little word of caution, when the dialogue is dismissed, there's no method provided to reopen it. So for this reason, best practices to display non-modal dialogues is by using the show method. That's a good tip. Yeah, because then if you close it with a button or something, there's no way to reopen it. So important to have a, a method for your users, depending on your needs, unless it's a one-time thing, which it very well could be. Could be. But going back to modals, another neat feature of modal dialogues is that they're cast into a new layer on top of the rest of the page called the top layer, which sits adjacent to the body, but after it. So it's technically like on top of the body in the HTML. Um, and this has a few benefits. The first is that you don't need to use Z index and fight with Z index along with the rest of your page because it's a separate layer on top of the rest. And in DevTools, there's even like a little badge that shows you when things pop up in the top layer, the top layer badge. So you could check that out if you're using modal dialogues um, or popovers. And you can also style the backdrop pseudo element between the top layer and the rest of the UI. So again, that's also on top of the rest of the UI. And you can do a lot of fun things with background, like you could do some semi-opaque background colors, gradients, you could do blurred backgrounds with backdrop filter. So you can kind of create that visual separation from the elements in your top layer and the elements in your body, the rest of the page. So very uh, useful, especially when you have dialogues where the rest of the page is inerted and you wanna make it very clear that there is, don't use this, <laughs> don't click anything else until you interact with my dialogue. Totally. Uh, that top layer feature is so sick too, because like I'll be using Astro or some framework and they're like, error in your TypeScript. And I'm like, oh, really? Uh, you know, big surprise there. Anyway, so when it shows the error, but guess what? I'm working on a dialogue. My dialogue is on top of their error. That's funny. And it is funny. They're like, they, they injected it at the end of the page on uh, in the body. Surely it's on top with their Z index mega 3000. Uh, and nope. My Z index of one in the top layer is yeah, defeating. Yeah. Your... <laughs> oh, we should make a game where it's like Z index battles. No, that mm. sounds lame. Maybe it'd be cool. I don't know. Okay, but that was dialogue. We covered dialogue, modal dialogues, non-modal dialogues, backdrops of these things. This is all super rad stuff, but let's talk about popover, a cousin of the dialogue element. Popover itself is not an element, but actually a global attribute that enables a set of behaviors. And since it's an attribute, you can apply it to any element, though you should be, uh, you use that within reason. So popover itself doesn't have semantic meaning like a dialogue does, but it can be combined with other elements that do, such as a nav element or a div with an aria role, like role equals menu. You can invoke these either with JavaScript or declaratively in HTML. So popover is kind of paving the way for this declarative interaction pattern so that we don't have to use JavaScript. So for example, here's some HTML. You got a button and you have an attribute on there called popover target. That's all lowercase, no spaces or anything. It just looks like one big long mix of words. Anyway, it's popover target equals and then you pass an ID in there. And so let's say the ID is my popover because we're really clever at naming <laughs> things, you know? So we got a popover, popover target says to my popover, and it says something like open popover. So you got a button, looks like it's gonna do something and it's targeting an ID. So then we have another element somewhere else in the DOM. It could be nested deep, could be high up, who cares? It's a div and it's got the popover attribute on it and an ID. This is clutch. So we've got a button that targets something by an ID. It says popover target. It's going to find that element by ID, make sure it's a popover, and show it for us all declaratively with HTML. So that's a really cool one to stash in your brain and also see the show notes. We'll have notes about it. And then from JavaScript, you can say show popover uh, if you target that popover element. And you can close it with the hide method. And lastly, there's uh, just like how there's a backdrop on a dialogue, which is also a backdrop on a popover, right? Just to double check. I think so. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, you can style in open. So a dialogue, it got the open attribute 
attributes are not toggled on popovers. Instead, there's a pseudo class that is called colon popover dash open. So if you want to know when your popover is open, use this pseudo class and you get to you're off to the races. Nice. So let's do a quick speed run of the similarities and differences. I think both of these are very powerful features. So some similarities, uh, they both can be in the top layer. Top so layer. modal dialogues and popovers, we love the top layer. Uh, with both of those in the top layer, you can style backdrop, again, for modal dialogues and for all popovers. And they can both have manual closing. So a default popover is a popover auto, which automatically gets the toggling, the light dismiss, stuff like that. Uh, but you can have a popover equals manual, which is a type of popover that forces you to ignore the light dismiss and you have to use a button that closes the popover. Um, and that's something that uh, you can also have with dialogue. <laughs> so you don't get light dismiss with dialogue by default, but you can have that manual closing. So a couple similarities. So popover, uh, we have manual and then popover auto and then popover delicious, the one mm. that you the one that you eat with your pop dialogue. Popover cherry, popover cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Savory, popover savory, popover sweet. Anyway, okay, so here's some differences. So you just went over similarities. Some differences. There's some semantics that are different between one's an element, one's an attribute. We have the way to show and hide them. The way that you invoke them is different. The way that they inert the page or not, the way that they light dismiss or not, which is also just for now because Popover has laid down some nice patterns that we'd like to bring to dialogue. And then the state of these things. One is an attribute state, like dialogue has the open attribute. And then we have a pseudo class for the Popover element. So it is kind of funny if you're used to one and then you move to the other because there are those small differences. Just even like you mentioned, pop over open pseudo element versus the open attribute. Yeah. Just those small differences. But it makes sense if you think about it, given that one's an element and one is an attribute. Um, but hopefully, yes, more similarities over time than differences. So speaking about the future um, and those similarities becoming similarities that were differences. Uh, the first is that light dismiss is so useful that we we want it for dialogue. Yes. So currently there's discussions about making dialogue light dismissible, which has been a challenge because it does inert the rest of the page. So when you click off, it's inerted and you don't actually get the ability to light dismiss. But right now there's discussion in the what working group with a attribute called closed by and doing something like closed by equals any to signify that the dialogue can be closed by any interaction, including clickaways outside of the dialogue. So this would make the dialogue's developer experience experience or DX more declarative and similar to the nice DX of popover where you don't require JavaScript to light dismiss it, which is so nice. I keep thinking of Star Wars with light dismiss. I'm like, I am on the dark side though, and I dark dismiss my dialogues. <laughs> <laughs> you got two lightsabers. You click you're like, on the dark side if you have a backdrop. <laughs> That's true. They're just like two lightsabers clashing. <laughs> Lights, light dismiss, <laughs> dark dismiss. Okay, I was stupid. Uh, let's talk about another future thing, which is invoke target. So this is for triggering dialogues and maybe other future modal top layer stuff in HTML. It fixes that issue where it requires you to use JavaScript like dialogue.showmodal to trigger and open. And so it makes the developer experience as seamless as popover. We're being, you know, we can, you can hear a theme here, which is popover is paving some really healthy uh, patterns for us that we want to bring to other elements that are like this. And you can try invoke target currently implemented in Canary behind a flag. Um, implemented by two third-party rad developers, if I got to say, two OpenUI members. We got Luke Warlow and Keith Circle. Thank you for this implementation prototype. It's rad. Yes, and not only in uh, Canary, but they implemented it in all three browsers. What? So it's pretty cool. I don't know if it's stable in any of them, but it is available behind a flag. Um, and hopefully we'll just make it stable, but... Thank you for your hard work and for getting this into browsers. Yeah, they got like code machetes. They're just jumping into jungles, hacking paths. Wow. That's how you do it. You're like, I want this feature. I'm just going to build it. Cool. <laughs> um, so after invoke target, hopefully we'll get this next one, which is called interest target. This one's in a little bit uh, earlier stages and the name might change, we don't know, but it would allow for triggering of these popovers and dialogues open on hover or tab. So it's like you're showing interest instead of a click. 
And I think specifically, I actually don't know if this would work for dialogue, but for at least for popover, um, this would let you get into the popover when you hovered over, say, like a link in Wikipedia. Or this is another example on a GitHub, like you can hover over a repo and it'll give you the info about the repo. Um, or Twitter profiles, if you hover over someone's image, then it shows you a preview of their profile and description and links and things like that. So this would not only be for hover, but it would also be for tabbing, which is why it's called interest target. So the challenge here is making it accessible. How do you make it accessible to be able to show interest in something like a link or other element, but still make that link clickable, which is a different interaction pattern with different accessibility, while being able to invoke a third thing, which is the popover, so that it shows up and shows you a preview or tooltip that might also have interactive content within it. It's like a huge accessibility problem in question. Yeah. But it's so prevalent that I would really love to solve this for developers and solve that accessibility question mark. So hopefully we get interest target. And I think that this one works really well with the next topic for popover. They kind of go hand in hand. Yes, the popover hint. And so this is nice. Let's say you have multiple popovers, right? You're hovering this, you're hovering that, you're hovering anyway, and they all have little popovers. Um, what if they start stacking on top of each other? So you have multiple elements that can enter the top layer. We didn't really cover that much, but you can totally do that. And the most recent added one will be on top. And so popover equals hint won't close the other popovers if they're equal to auto. Uh, so this is like, yeah, you got ephemeral things, you got lots of popovers happening and you don't want them to cancel out. The, anyway, you have some control here to specify whether or not the new pop-up closes the old one or if you want these to stack on top of each other. Yeah, and that one is not implemented yet, as you mentioned, but it'll be so useful, especially with the interest target, because you can do things like little tool tips where it pops up, but you don't want it to close if you have like a select open. You know, you might be interacting with something and have a little like info button that might be a tool tip with more info. Then you can use popover equals hint to open that while not closing your select menu, because that's another popover. So it can be super, super useful. Um, and we don't have it yet, but it's in the I don't know if it's in the spec yet, but it should be coming. This is like the next thing. When all this was spec'd out, it was three options for popover. Popover equals auto, popover equals manual, and popover equals hint. So a very useful feature indeed. Nice. That's all we have today. So thank you for joining us in this first episode of season five. I think uh, this is a really important topic. This is a pretty important set of features to use if you're creating any kind of UI that's layered. Um, so definitely take advantage of Dialog. It's wide browser support. Popover, it's coming browser support. And yeah, explore these things. Yeah, just get rid of all your portals. If you're in React, y'all, just work with this uh, top layer. You can invoke a dialogue that's nested super far into the DOM tree, and it will pop out there on top of the top layer. That's true. I mean, if you're using a framework, you don't have to have any additional dependencies, like layer management for this. It None should it. work by default. It just works. You put a dialogue anywhere in any component and call show modal on it and watch it be on top. It's pretty sweet. Well, anyway, uh, check out our next episode, episode 80, because we're going to be talking about animating things in and out of the top layer. So how do you get popovers and dialogues to, I mean, they're kind of changing DOM position and then they're just appearing. So they're kind of being appended and then they need to animate in and then animate out, which is awkward because they're it's toggling complex. the display property, right? They're set, being set to display none and block and being appended. Stick with us in episode 80s. We crush that topic and teach you how to wrangle that stuff. And also send us questions if you have any of them, you know, tweet us with the hashtag CSS podcast, like always. Yes. And on Twitter slash X, whatever you want to call it, I'm Yuna. That's at UNA. And I'm Argyle Inc. A-R-G-Y-L-E-I-N-K. And your question could help a lot of people. And if you like this show, please give us a review on whatever podcast app you're using today or share this with a friend because that's how people discover our show. Believe it or not, the more reviews we have, the more sharing of the podcast is how we can share the knowledge. Um, and that means that we get to spend more time making this show for you. We, we have a good time. We hope that you have a good time. You've got the power. Well, anyway, thanks, everybody. We'll look forward to your questions. We'll see you next time. Bye.